Let's take a look at these piecewise defined functions in an actual application. So Margaret is competing in a 100 mile adventure race. So she kayaks for 20 miles in two hours, then mountain bikes 75 miles in three hours, and then finally she runs five miles in one hour. What we want to do is actually sketch a graph of Margaret's distance versus time, and then try to write a piecewise function for the graph. So let's just start off by making a little bit of a little table here to fill in some of these things. So for the kayak activity, uh, how long did she spend in hours? Well, she spent two hours on that. How far did she travel? She traveled 20 miles. So what was her rate? Her rate was 20 miles per two hours, or 10 miles an hour. So 20 over 2, or 10. For the bike, she was three hours on the bike. She traveled 75 miles. Her rate was 75 over 3, which is 25. And for the run, she ran for one hour. She covered five miles, so that's five miles per hour. OK, great. So, so that's all the data. Now let's take a look if we can actually put together where the intervals are going to be. So where are the intervals? Well, for the first two hours, she was doing kayaking. For the next three hours, she was doing biking. And for the last hour, she was doing running. So that actually determines the intervals. So the kayaking was for time between 0 and 2 hours. The first 2 hours, we were doing she was doing kayaking. Then after 2 hours, for the next 3 hours, she was doing the bike. So what we have here is once you are greater than 2, but 3 hours after that, which is going to be less than or equal to 5, she was riding the bicycle. And then after 5 hours, so once you're bigger than 5 hours, for the next hour after that, she's running. So that's going to be less than or equal to the next hour, which is going to be 6. So this actually tells us what the intervals are going to be. And we can now actually put all this information together and write a slope, a point, and then produce the equation. So here we go. So what's the slope? Well, that, of course, is given by the rate. So we already found that. So the slope for the kayak portion is going to be 10. For the bike portion is 25. And for the uh, run portion, it's going to be 5, because we already computed the slope. It's the change in distance over the change in time. So that's good. Now, it'd be good to actually know a point that's going to be on each of these graphs. Well, at the beginning, when she starts, she's at 0, 0. And that's when she starts the, on the kayak, so we know that's OK. Now, what about the bike? Well, when does she start the bike? Well, she starts, the, she starts on the bike actually two hours later, the moment she finishes the kayak. So two hours later, where is she located? She's 20 miles into the, into the adventure. So we know that she starts the bike at 2 comma 20, right? Two hours later, she's located at 20. And finally, where is she when she starts the run? Well, we can figure that out because she is how far into the entire adventure? She's 20 plus 75, which is 95. So we know that, and she starts the run, which is at 5. She's at 95, right? So five hours later, 2 plus 3 is 5 hours later. She's traveled 95, 95 miles. All right, so now putting all this together, we can actually find the equation for each of these lines, slope and a point. So we know, for example, here, this is just y equals 10x. Let me show you this one a little bit closer up so you can see this. If I use point slope form, what I see here is y minus the y value, which is 20, equals the slope, 25 times x minus the x value, which is 2. And now we can solve this for y. And I see y minus 20 equals 25x minus 50. And if I bring the 20 over by adding 20 to both sides, I see y equals 25x minus 30. And so that's the equation for this portion. And doing the similar kind of thing with here, I see y equals 5x Plus, 40, uh, plus 70, that's what it works out to be, plus 70. So if we now graph all this, we see that we have these different intervals and we have these different graphs. So we can put all the information together, and we're all set. So here we go. Here's the graph. 
So we start at 0, 0. And then we graph the line y equals 10x. So that's going to have a slope of 10 over 1. So I go 10 up, 1 over, 10 up, 1 over, and I get right to here. Connect them. Then after that, what happens? Well, now my slope increases quite a bit. 25 over 1, which is the same thing as 50 over 2. So 50 over 2, I add 50, go over 2, and I'm right here. And I keep doing that until I get to 5. So I connect it here with 5. Need a straight edge, need a straight edge, need a straight edge. Straight edge time. Yes, yes, yes. Straight edges are important. So that's from 2 to 5. From 2 to 5, I've got this piece. And then finally, from 5 to 6, so from 5 to 6, what happens? Well, now I've got a little teeny slope of just 5. And so I just go right up to here, and I end at a height of 100. And so this curve represents, in fact, this path. And you can write this piecewise curve precisely, in fact, like this. We'd say that her path, so I'm going to call it m for Margaret, m of x equals one of three things. It equals 10x for x's between 0 and 2. It then equals 25x minus 30 for x between 2 and 5. And finally, 5x plus 70 for x's between 5 and 6. So that's how we'd express that in terms of an equation. These are the intervals, and graphically it looks like this. So you can see all of these things coming together. We have three lines here, and they represented, they're represented by this line, that line, and that line. Pretty neat stuff. You can see how we can put together pieces of a function to create piecewise functions. Very cool.